Hi everyone, welcome back to Digital Dreambox. Today we are nearing the end of our gas pump uh, tutorial series and we're going to make some high poly objects to bake onto our low poly. So that high poly to low poly workflow. And yeah, and then we'll do our final bake. So it's pretty exciting. And that's pretty much it. We'll probably do a texturing portion somewhere within this, either this series or maybe a separate playlist. Quite, haven't quite decided there yet. Um, but without further ado, let's jump into uh, part something, 11 maybe, of our gas pump series. Let's jump right in. All right, let's start. Uh, we have three groups in our outliner. I'm going to hide the low group, so our low poly group, pressing H on the keyboard, and I'm going to hide the original as well. Um, this is our high poly group where we'll make a few high poly objects and we'll bake that normal map. Um, first thing I want to do though is we want to make sure that this has all the soft edges it needs, right? So one way to do it is you would soften everything and harden only the edges you need, but we'll kind of uh, take a shortcut. We'll just soften any remaining edges that we need and harden any remaining edges we need as well. For the most part, everything looks pretty good. I just want to make sure down here is okay as well. Um, I'm going to grab these edges. I'm going to select this edge, hold down shift, double click this one, and I'm going to unselect this one and this one. And over here on the back, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to unselect this one, that corner, and this one. And now I want to soften these edges. I'm going to use the hotkey though. I'm going to hold down shift and the right mouse button and go to soften harden edges and then choose soften edge. There we go, just to make sure. And then over here, um, on the inside of this display, I'm going to select this edge, hold down shift, double click this one. And I want to make sure that these are soft as well, probably on the outside as well. So what I'm going to do is hold down shift and the right mouse button, same thing. There we go, and that one softened that, that area. And then on the outside, it looks okay, but I just want to double check and make sure. Grabbing all of those, and then let's do the same thing. Shift and the right mouse button, soften, harden edges, and soften. There we go, I think it changed it a little bit. And I think those covered what we needed for this. Um, the rest, it looks pretty soft, and we have um, hard edges where we need it. So, all right. Next, what we want to do is turn some of these objects into high poly objects. So let's do uh, this one here. I'm going to isolate it, just frame in on it. And on this one, what I'm going to do is um, I want to retain the edge look, edge look at the top here, but we need some supporting edges because if I press three on the keyboard now, you can see that it starts collapsing at the top here. Everywhere else is fine. Those are intended, but up here we need to support this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edge mode, going to double click this edge, this one, this one, and this one. And then I want to grab uh, this side section as well. So I'm going to hold down shift, select this one, and then double click this one. And I think that should be okay. Let's try this. I'm going to hold down shift and the right mouse button. Actually, instead of using my hotkeys, which I normally do, I'm going to open up the modeling toolkit because I'll be doing this a lot and it'll save me from explaining. Um, I'm going to click bevel. There we go. And over here, you can see that it's beveled it. I'm going to turn the chamfer off. And then I'm going to press three on the keyboard. So um, you'll, when you see the view switch, it's just me um, switching between one and three on the keyboard. right? Um, and I'm just taking a look to see whether that looks all right. I think it does. I'm just going to play with the fraction a bit just to see, um, get the look I want. But I think something like that looks pretty good. All right. And now what I'm going to do is uh, press one on the keyboard. And now let's smooth this. I'm going to go into object mode, select this, and I'm going to click smooth. And for something like this, um, I'm going to give it another subdivision level. We're not too worried about the uh, geometry to count on our high poly. These won't be going into the game. We're just concerned about getting um, a good look for it. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is, um, yeah, that's fine. What I'm going to do now is um, just unisolate it and move on to the next object. Let's do the caps as well. So the rear cap and the bottom cap. These are pretty easy. Just gonna isolate it. Gonna go into edge mode, grab everything, and I'm gonna hit it with a bevel. 
And for this one here, I'm going to turn the chamfer off again. That already looks pretty good. I'll play the fraction a bit just to see, but I think it looks pretty good. Um, yeah. So uh, don't forget though, we haven't quite smoothed this yet. So I'm going to press one on the keyboard and now I want to give it an actual smooth. So um, this one over here and this one, just one level is fine. There you go. And now let's do the bottom piece as well. So this one, I'm going to make it a little bit sharper than this one. So I'm going to go to isolate it, edge mode, select everything and bevel. Chamfer off. There you go. I think that looks pretty good. We're basically giving it um, a high poly look, so it's gonna hopefully have a little bit of a highlight and not look so hard edge, right? Um, but something like this, I probably want it to be just slightly more sharp. There we go. Right, and there we go. Now we give it a smooth. And I think that looks good. All right, so we have those ones. Um, let's do the hose. The hose is pretty easy. I'm just gonna select it and hit smooth and give it an extra subdivision level. There you go. And now it looks really smooth. What we're trying to do is just get a nice blend of shading along um, onto that low poly. All right, so now let's do this one as well. So there's two pieces here. Let's work on the top piece first. And with this one, if I press three, you can see that it rounds out too much at the bottom. We just need a supporting edge there. So I'm gonna double click this edge, add these edges to it. Bevel, um, let's turn chaffer off. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, pressing one on the keyboard again. And now let's give it, it an actual smooth. There we go. Nice high poly look. And now let's work on this bottom piece as well. This one, what I'm going to do is, I'm just trying to see here what the best way to do this one is. Um, Cause I wanna retain the edge look in there. I'm actually going to just grab all these edges and hit it with a bevel to see what it does. I'm gonna turn chaffer off and yeah, that'll work. I'm just gonna play with the fraction. All right, let's give this an actual smooth as well. I'm pressing one on the keyboard to go back and hit it with a smooth. I think one level would be fine for that. Um, You know what, with this one, I'm just gonna undo this. Um, I'm gonna separate it so the, the side sections, I do want that, but um, I just wanna show you. Sometimes you need to do it separately because um, I want this section to be sharper. So I'm gonna go in here and sharpen this area. And um, I'll keep this area sharp as well. So I'll grab all these. I'm gonna double click this one and I'm gonna click bevel for this one. And here, I want to make this area sharper. So it's going to look a little bit like um, like that, right? And then this one, I'll make just slightly less sharp. It's just a minor detail. You don't have to do it on yours, but um, I kind of want it on this one. And we'll need probably all these as well. All right, there we go. That's closer to the look I want. And now I'm gonna press one on the keyboard and give this a smooth. And you can see that the geometry is all over the place. It doesn't look very good, but from this view, it's fine. And that's what will get projected. All right. Um, okay, so that looks good there. Um, I think that covers most of that. What we want to do next is um, we have the opportunity to give uh, some edges and highlights to some of these other objects as well. So the sign base, this one here, what I'm going to do is isolate it, 
go into edge mode and same thing I want this one to be a little bit sharper so I'm just going to uh, bevel it I guess using this one playing with the fraction pressing three on the keyboard so that part will look pretty sharp maybe a little bit less sharp and then what I want to do is bevel this one but make it less sharp um, so I want it to look maybe something like um, this right so hopefully we can project that that feeling of that roundness onto the low poly all right um, back into object mode pressing one on the keyboard and I'll give it a smooth I think one level is fine for that one now let's see with two yeah I'll go with two okay all right so that's where it's done and then over here what I can do at the bottom is um, actually on the display as well we can give these a bit of a highlight so I'm gonna go into edge mode and this is kind of like making it high poly as well just gonna double click these edges all on the front and I'm going to bevel it so bevel and I'm just gonna reduce the fraction a bit and that's all I want Not, nothing else just a little bit like that and if I click off you'll be able to see there's a, a bit more of a roundness to it all right and then the bottom I'm going to actually do the same thing go into edge mode double click this one hold down shift double click this one bevel and play with the fraction a bit and let's take a look and there you go a little bit softer and I think the rest is fine so this high poly is done let's move let me just double check that we got everything um, yep looks good uh, oh actually one more thing so the front here these objects um, I'm gonna go into the front view right we need to soften the front so um, that's the look we're gonna go for go into edge mode I'm gonna box select pretty much everything down here hold down shift do another box select here and same thing here and then I want to soften these edges so um, by the way you have the option to do it up here as well mesh display soften edge right there you go and now if we go back into here um, those are all soft now right. all right so now our high poly is done um, let's select it and let's export it so go to file um, export selection we're going to go choose to overwrite our previous high um, high poly mesh and this we can leave alone and then just click uh, export there we go and uh, now let's hide this group and work on the low poly one so the low poly one's over here I'm going to unhide it and with this one it's a little bit different We're, what we want to do is similar to what we did before we need to soften all these edges and only harden the ones that um, will improve the look of our um, bake right so let's go into object mode select everything and we'll go to mesh display soften edge and now what I want to do is I'm just checking that we didn't miss anything um, okay so I'm gonna go into here and the display needs some work so over here I'm gonna go into edge mode I'm gonna double click this edge and let's harden that one so hold down shift and the right mouse button soften harden and harden that should fix that triangulation up there that um, pinching and artifact that we had earlier um, and then the inside I'll show you how to grab this one so we could you know like because there's end gons here we can't really double click and get all of it but if you go into face mode select this face hold on shift select this one you can grab that edge perimeter so if you hold down control and the right mouse button you can go two edges two edge perimeter and now we have that edge loop right and now we can just harden that so hold down shift right mouse button soften harden and harden so that part's done nice um, and now that's all done there down here is all going to be baked those are edges we checked so those will be fine um, on the side here we need to do something so let's go into object mode let's isolate it and then over here I want to harden these edges in here because if we don't we're gonna have massive uh, um, shading issues in there so let's go into edge mode I'm gonna double click this edge and I'm also going to um, grab these ones Oops. there we 
go. I want the corners as well. I need those to be hardened. And then the top corners as well. All right, so let's soften, harden these edges. Or oh, sorry, hold down shift, right mouse button. Uh, soften, harden, and then harden these edges. And then um, in here, we need to harden the edges of this um, hole. So the, the outer edge and the inner edge there, right? So a trick to do this, to grab both of those, is go into face mode. Same thing, uh, select this face, hold down shift, double click this one, and then we need to grab the edge perimeter. So hold down control and the right mouse button, two edges, two edge perimeter. Now we have those. And just need to hold down shift and the right mouse button, soften, harden edges, and harden. All right, so that one's done. So that will look good. Um, let's unisolate the view and make sure that we're not missing anything. Oh yeah, there's a few more. Okay, so over here, um, this one, what we could do with this one is, um, I'm going to just isolate it. And with this one, I'm going to go into edge mode, I'm gonna box select the top, hold down shift, box select the bottom, because I only need the outer edges. I don't need the, these ones, I need these ones to be soft, right? So what I'm gonna do is hold down shift again, uh, select this edge, hold down shift, double click this one, and do the same uh, all around. All right, and let's harden these edges. So hold down shift, right mouse button, soften, harden, and harden. There you go, that one's done. Just gonna unisolate that. We also have this piece down here. Um, just gonna isolate it. This one's really easy, just select it. And what we can do is just try to uh, harden everything and see how it looks. So harden edge. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. It's a minor piece tucked inside, so Fine, and then this one as well. So this one, um, let's try the same thing. So mesh display, hard edge. This is the same, by the way, as doing um, this. So going into edge mode, selecting everything, and doing our soften harden. There you go. And now we just wanna see if we need to soften anything. We could soften these edges in here if we want, right? So go into this edge and grabbing these ones but it's not even going to be seen, so it's not even worth our time, right? Um, plus it looks fine. All right, so that's that. Um, let's see what else we're missing. I think that's it. Um, so now what we can do with this is we'll select it. We could delete the history if we want, and let's export it. So file, export selection. Again, we'll be calculating tangents by normals inside of Substance Painter. You can leave that off. And what I'm going to do is overwrite that low poly from before and click Export Selection. There we go. And now I think we're ready to jump into Substance Painter and try our final bake. So let's uh, check it out. All right, so here we are back inside of Substance Painter. Let's load in our low poly again. And what we wanna do is we wanna check that the fix we made um, fixes we made look good. So I'm going to choose gas pump low, click open. And then um, this is pretty much the same as what we did in the last part, except there's going to be one change that we'll do. Uh, first, let's compute tangent space. Click OK. And then over here, let's go to texture set settings, bake mesh maps. I'm going to deselect everything and choose normal map. There we go. Uh, for dock, sorry, for output size, I'm going to choose 2K. And then let's load in that um, high definition mesh. I'm going a bit fast because we're about to redo this all anyhow, right? So it shows the high definition. Down here though, this is the change we're making. This time for match, we're gonna choose by mesh name and just make sure that the suffix here matches what you have in Maya. Uh, click bake. And let's check now to see if um, our fixes look good, right? So um, up here, you can see that the rays got in here much better. We also have, um, let me decrease the brush size. Um, we have something that feels almost high poly here, right? We rounded that out, that looks great. The front display, we were able to clean up a lot of those jaggies there. So that looks excellent. 
Uh, down here, we added a couple of extra edge loops to create a highlight on the high poly, and it looks like it baked nicely on the low poly, so that's excellent. Um, over here, the hose, right? We baked this. Uh, it still has the silhouette of a low poly hose, but you could see the shading looks much more consistent. It looks nicer. Um, up here, the rays had trouble getting into this area as well. So I actually had a look at this earlier, so I'm just, I know where to look, but over here it looks a lot better. The caps look great. Um, this looks almost high poly now, right? Or it should look high poly, right? Um, down here, the rays are getting into here a lot better because we separated this into two pieces, right? And I'm just going to add that shiny aluminum material so we can take a look at this um, section as well. So you can see over here, right, this just, you can tell this looks like it has more geometry, even though it doesn't. And then over here, where we had the pinching of the triangles, this is all fixed up. So everything, everywhere, else look, everywhere <laughs> looks really good. Uh, let's now triangulate the mesh and reload this back in, right? So um, let's go back inside of Maya. I'm just going to close Substance Painter. I always like to start with a fresh project, so I'm just going to discard it. And in here, what we're going to do is um, triangulate this. Before I do this, I'm going to make a duplicate, Control D. And the reason we want to do this is, let me just rename this first, pre-triangulation. Okay. And the reason we're doing this is when you're working in games, oftentimes they'll require fixes. So it's nice to have something that's pre-triangulated in case you need to go back to it. Um, let's just hide this and then for this one. I'm just gonna open this up We're going to grab all these objects and triangulate it and The reason we're doing this is at some point whether it's in the modeling program the texturing program or the game engine this mesh will be triangulated, but um, if you do it in the modeling program um, The work will be a bit more consistent. So that's shading. All right, so now let's grab it we'll go and um, Let's delete history again um, file, export selection, and we're going to overwrite our gas pump low and click export and click yes. There we go. Now what we want to do is go back inside of Substance Painter and um, bake the rest of our maps. So this is pretty much the workflow that, that I go through. Um, give Substance Painter a second and um, it will load up. There we go. And now let's load up our file new and this is our triangulated version and click open and then um, you have the option so i'll go through some of these you have the option to choose your template um, by default it's the metallic roughness but you can also change it to some of the other ones if you're working in unreal you can choose this template and if you're working in unity's hd render pipeline you want to choose this one for resolution um, choose something that makes sense for an object of this size, it might be like 2K for you. For the um, tutorial, so the uh, I'm gonna choose 4K for the presentation of this tutorial though. And for the normal map, DirectX will be what you want for Unreal, and um, OpenGL is what you want for Unity. Um, and then I'm gonna turn this on because I didn't do it inside of Maya. Um, it's recommended to do it inside of Substance Painter. And then uh, click OK. And now let's bake the high poly. We'll go bake mesh maps. And over here, I'm gonna um, bake all these maps this time. For my output size, I'm choosing 4K, but that'll be probably be overkill for you, maybe. Um, I'm gonna apply to the diffusion, and I'm gonna load in the um, gas pump high. Um, over here, down here, over here, down here, uh, over here, we have a frontal distance and rear distance. Um, the frontal distance is where the ray projects from, and the rear distance is where it eventually uh, finishes. So that's kind of like a quick explanation. So when you're baking, and if you have some artifacts and stuff, you'll want to adjust these numbers and play around with it to um, get a, a good bake, right? Just so you know. And then down here, I'm just going to change this to by mesh name. Um, it's recommended that you apply diffusion, and also for anti-aliasing, um, it's recommended that you go with at least a fork four by four, right? Two at minimum, right? But I'm gonna choose four for myself. And then I'm gonna bake selected textures. Um, this will probably take a few seconds to bake for me, so I'll probably fast forward this part, just so you know. 
All right, so everything's finished or the baking has finished. I'm gonna click OK. And then down here we have these other maps. Um, Substance Painter uses these other maps for the mask editors for like a wearing effects and weathering effects, right? Um, but yeah, this is all ready to be textured. And again, you'll probably want to go in and make sure that yours looks good and adjust that frontal and rear distance if you need it. Um, but now what I want to do is, um, actually, let me just look at this. Yeah, it looks really nice. Right? That's a really nice bake, by the way. So we're going for something like this. Um, what we'll do now is go back into Maya. I want to show you one more thing before, before we wrap up this tutorial. So go to Maya. Let's open this up. And inside of Maya, we have um, our gas pump low, and it's made up of a bunch of objects. And you actually don't want to use this one in the game engine. You want to combine these objects. And even down here, we could recombine these two objects and merge those vertices if we want to. Also, our gas pump is looking really good. If I select everything, you can see topology-wise, um, it's pretty efficient. So that's awesome. But let me show you how you would combine this and why you would. Um, so a bunch of these objects here, let's go up here and click the combine button, but I want to do it after I open up the UV editing workspace. And over here, um, I have everything selected. Let me just expand this window. Here are our objects, right? And here are the UVs for them, right? And if we combine it, we make it one object and we can delete the history as well, right? And now this is what you take into the game engine. So when you um, create your textures and bring them into the game engine, you'll be putting it on this mesh. So when you combine it, you can see that the, the texture set here, um, the UVs aren't affected, right? And this makes it much more efficient for the game engine. Just want to show you guys that. But yeah, you're ready now to um, texture your mesh. So we can wrap up this uh, tutorial. All right, that wraps up our high poly to low poly workflow for the retro gas pump. Thanks everyone that's made it this far. You all are awesome. Uh, there'll be more future series to come, so stay tuned for those. And turn on that notification bell if you want to stay up to date as well. Um, until next time, this has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.